All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I think it's afternoon for most people. If we have any West Coasters, good morning to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for joining in to our third uh, installment of this year's BDPA NSB from Idea to Lunch speaker series. Uh, first series was with Eric Williamson um, around the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and our second series was with Lizette. Um, and I don't want to mess up her last name right now, uh, but uh, Lizette spoke about um, is your business sustainable and, and market ideation and things along those lines. So uh, the next step in this series is funding your business, uh, which I know everyone is very interested in. A very important aspect of any business, uh, whether you're a corporate entrepreneur, a nonprofit, whatever, you got to fund it somehow, some way. So we're going to get into some tips and strategies with that uh, with our uh, illustrious guest today, uh, Ms. Shatisha Stevens uh of financial matters so i'll let her tell you all more about that uh so thank you for joining us thank you for being with us nakisha and nick are, are both participants in this year's program so i'm glad awesome. they're on and uh, i won't be surprised if we have more people trickling in throughout but we will get going and like i say the recording will be available um on our youtube channel afterwards so you can go back and watch it and if this is your first time seeing it thank you for checking out our youtube like subscribe comment press the buttons down low all that influencer talk <laughs> so all right i'll turn the floor over to you shatisha and let you have the show sure awesome thank you so much Devin, for opening us up hi everybody my name is shatisha stevens i am the ceo and founder of financial matters which is a um financial literacy education company um, teaching all things finance as it relates to personal and business finances. Um, I host a ton of workshops on a variety of different topics, as well as do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I'm here today um, and super excited to have this dialogue with you, right? Because although I will be presenting content and sharing information, I want you guys to engage, to ask questions, to talk about, you know, where you are um, in your journey, with your business as it relates to funding. Um, and a lot of my workshops are education-based, right? So some of this information you might know, some of this information, this might be new for the first time. So I'm hoping that you leave with some resources and some tips that will help you um, in your entrepreneurial journey. All right, let's get started. So in the agenda for today, Yes, the bulk of our topic is going to be all things business fine, um, funding. However, uh, before we get the money, right, we need to really understand how we use the money. Um, how do we present that back to uh, whether it be the IRS or other uh, stakeholders um, in terms of what's the money coming in, what's the money going out. So we're going to ground ourselves in that. And then we're going to talk about business credit because I think that's totally underrated when it comes to, to funding and how we can use that and leverage that to, to further our businesses along. All right, so um, business financials. Um, most of you, um, as this kind of states, are in that idea to uh, operating or generating a revenue stage. So that means you have some sort of product or service that's gonna generate money for you. Um, but what you need to know when it comes to your business financials, because it's super important, because as a person who issues grants or as a person who issues business credit, it's like, why would I give you money if you are not, you don't know one, what you're gonna do with it, two, you're not showing me like projected sales um, or forecasting to me in terms of like your income statements and all those things as to what that money is going to do for your business, um, that's going to be super important. So again, grounding. What is what is business income? I mean, it's similar to other uh, pieces of income that we might have, which is earned income through all our um, employment, passive income, whether we're getting that through investments, um, royalties income, dividend income, all of those things. Business income is basically the income that you get um, from, is generated from a business. So it is basically, if you have an established business, right, you're going to be reporting your business income via like a Schedule C, um, if you're like an LLC. Um, and then there's other forms for different types of, of business in terms of, um, you know, if you're a nonprofit or if you're a partnership. So you just want to understand, okay, 
is my business generating income right now? And if not, then what is that going to look like on paper? The next thing is your business expenses, because um, while you're going to have money coming in, you're also going to have business expenses in terms of what is it going to take to operate your business, right? So you're going to have operating expenses, whether you have a product and it's, you know, your cost for manufacturing or shipping or materials. If you're a service, if you're using tools or systems, those businesses, I mean, those expenses are going to be what you're going to have to show on your balance sheet um, and your income statement, uh, which is what we're going to get into next. So uh, key business financial statements um, that you will need to know um, for your business. First thing is balance sheet. So your balance sheet is the statement um, which basically shows um, what your business assets assets are, which is everything that you you own, right? So that's your business income, that's your income that you have, um, that's any uh, you know equity investments that your business own, and then your liabilities, which is really like your expenses, your debt, all of those things, um, and that is going to be on your balance sheet. So more, most times when you're talking to investors or you're asking you're talking to um, places that are issuing grants or giving business credit, they're going to ask you for either your, your tax document, which is what you submit to the IRS to show um, the profit and loss statements for your business, or they're going to ask you for your balance sheet, right? So how, how often should you maintain this particular document? Um, this should be prepared uh, every quarter or annually. Um, we're going to get into accounting methods and you know, how you would be able to generate some of these statements, but it's super important that you kind of have an understanding of before you get the money, you got to have some sort of system that's going to measure, um, you know, how this stuff is going to be reported. The next thing is your income statement. So the income statement just shows the revenues and expenses and the profitability over time. Again, if you're going to be getting any sort of um, angel investors or investors gonna, that's going to want equity, um, they're going to want to know, well, what is your P&L, which is your profit and loss statement, look like over time? What are you projecting in sales over like a quarter, right? Like before I give you money, kind of what, I'm, what am I getting myself into? And that is something that is kind of published annually. Um, so if you think about like large companies or large corporations, you can go on their website and kind of see, um, you know, their profit loss statements and what... Um, what their income and expenses kind of look like from a from a big picture perspective. And then the last thing is your your cash flow statement, which is really a detailed overview of your company's cash based transactions, um, money that's coming in and that's going out, which goes hand in hand to um, really again, what is going to be the accounting method for your specific business? Are you going to use QuickBooks? Are you going to do everything in Excel? Um, as most of you know, when you're starting out um, in your business, you're going to be playing all the roles. You're going to be the CEO, the admin, the you know CFO, the bookkeeper, whatever it is, until you are generating enough money to start hiring a team and soliciting help, right? So this is really... Um, good information for you to know because as a business owner, you need to have your, you need to know this stuff inside and out. If you're having a conversation with an investor on the fly and, you know, you say, oh, and they say to you, well, what does your P&L look like? What are your margins or whatever? You can't, if you're a new business or, you know, you're not someone who has a team yet, you can't say, oh, let me check with my accountant. You should have some sort of idea of where you are. So this is good stuff to kind of familiar, familiarize yourself with. And one thing I didn't say in the beginning, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me, um, you know, right in the chat, whatever you need to do. You don't have to wait to the end because this is, like I said, a dialogue and I want you guys to engage. All right. So let's see what that looks like in action, right? So I just took a basic example of um, a cash flow statement, it just basically shows, or this is the balance sheet actually, so it, be, it shows to you cost, the cost of sales. So again, the sell, I mean, the sales is $1,500. We know that. So the cost of sales, $150. Uh, they use the conference room, travel costs. So they tell you total cost of sales is $300. So the gross profit is 
1,200. That's the 15 minus the 300. So this is how you would represent it, um, again, in a simple Excel. Same thing with expenses. You see how it says, okay, they use newspaper ads to kind of promote whatever it is that they're selling. They looks like they also took out some sort of um, line of credit, which is why they have that loan payment. They also have interest for the loan, and then they have some general operating expenses that they just kind of lump together. So although they made $1,500 in, sell, in sales, they also had the cost of that um, so, you know, to prepare them for those sales, and then the expenses that went along with just generally, you know, operating that specific business. And there's apps and all of those things that will do this for you. But I think in the beginning, I like to, I, I used Excel um, and I still do just because to me, I want to get very intimate with the numbers and kind of understand, you know, um, all the ins and outs until I, you know, scale and I'm large enough to say like, oh, I need a system kind of spit this out for me. So basic accounting principles. The very first thing that you should do is never mix your business and personal finances. You want to make sure that you open up a business um, a business bank account. Now, what you need um, to open up the biz business bank account, you need an EIN number, which you probably already know. You need to actually register your business, whether it's a, a LLC and a corporation, a nonprofit, because when you go to the bank, if you were to go to Chase, they're going to ask you for, um, you know, the the, the document that you get once you register your business because that shows them that it's an actual business and they set it up that way um, on their end. You also need to decide on your bookkeeping method. Again, how will you track your income and expenses? I just gave you some ideas. Excel, there's um, QuickBooks, there's all of these, there's you know PayPal, there's all of these different um, systems, but you have to choose the one that works best for you and your and your business, right? Um, also, if you're going to have some sort of employees or contractors, you want to think about a payroll system. How am I going to pay these people? Are they going to be I-9? You know, um, I'm going to have them fill out I-9s or W-2s. Am I going to give them, um, you know, paper checks? Am I going to pay them cash? Like, what is that process going to look like? Again, how will you pay your business taxes? Because this is where most business owners get caught up, where they make all their money and then it come the end of the year, they owe and they say, well, why do I owe? You didn't pay any tax on that money, right? So depending on how much money your business is generating or you project that it's going to generate, you're going to have to pay some sort of quarterly taxes or yearly taxes. So factor that into, um, you know, your projection so that you know, again, what your net profit is. Also, um, your Dun & Brass number is something that you will need um, if you want to get business credit because it's kind of like your business credit score, right? Um, it's free, like the EIN number, you just go to the website, you create it. Um, but as you start to get business credit, whether it's loans or um, credit cards, that is going to show up on that Dun & Brass um, report. And as you start engaging with um, you know, other investors and stuff like that, they might start asking questions like, well, does your business have a done brass number? Are, are you already, did you get, you know, other investment or have you ever been able to use, you know, your business um, income to leverage credit? Like some of those things. So you want to kind of understand how that works as well. Any questions before I move into the next phase of this? I'd like to I'd like for you to elaborate a little bit more in that uh, D in US number. Yes. OK, so the Dun and Brass number is basically, again, as I mentioned, you go to the website, you have to fill in information about what your business is. Um, and that's essentially so when you think about the initial start of a business, you have to get an EI number, EIN number, which is basically your identification number specifically for that business. How is that EIN number used? That is used for when you file taxes on whatever tax form you need based on your business entity, they ask you for that EIN number. So you use that. And that's how people know, okay, this, you know, these numbers are associated with that specific business and the IRS can kind of tie that back. Um, with the Dun & Brass number, it's kind of similar in the sense that you create this number, which is free. Um, 
if you were to apply for a, a credit card or a loan in your business name, which means that it's not tied to your personal credit, you will need that number because just like when you have credit cards and, um, you know, paying on time, um, keeping your credit to debt ratio low, um, your payment history, your uh, balances, all that show up on your personal credit report, that will, that's what will show up on your Dun & Brass report because it's basically like a credit report before your business, right? So when you go fill out a, like I said, an application for either a credit card or a loan in your business name, not tied to your social security number, that application is going to say, what is your Dun & Brass number? Because the creditor will need to know, well, how am I going to report that you're paying paying on time or not paying on time or your how you're using your balances, right? So again, super easy to set up, but that's essentially how that's used. Now, that's specific to business credit and independent of other funding sources that we will get into, which is like grants, crowdfunding, and stuff like that. Because um, again, Dun & Brass number is just really good to have if you at some point wanted to leverage business credit to further your business, right? So say for instance, you, you know, you use, you got some grant money or some money from crowdfunding and you put that into your business, whether you invested some or created additional products or services. Now you're saying like, you know, I'm at the point where I no longer want to, that money is gone and I don't want to put any of my own money into it. Let me use, you know, business credit or uh, a loan to, to kind of further my business, you can use that Dun & Brass number to kind of establish that relationship between your business and the um, the line of credit that you're taking out. Does that answer your question? 100%. Thank you. Awesome. Great. So if you're thinking to yourself that, you know, I don't have any income yet, I don't even know what my expenses are, or um, you know, I've been in business for a while and I haven't been able to get a grant or haven't been able to get any any funding for my business. I really love this quote because it says business opportunities are like buses. They are always another one coming. I just love that because I just wanted to encourage whoever needs to hear to stay motivated, to stay, um, you know, inspired by your idea um, or your business and to know that like it takes time. Like, I always say Rome was not built overnight. Um, and I myself have been in business for over five years. And sometimes I'm like, I'm not making as, you know, enough as much money as I wanted to make or what that I thought I was gonna make. Um, or I haven't been able to like I applied for a hundred, you know, tons of grants and I've not I've gotten small ones, but not like big ones, like ten, twenty thousand. Some of the people that I know are getting an enormous amount of money and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And, you know, so it's, it's, it's easy to kind of feel defeated and be like, you know what, it's not worth it. Um, but just keep, you know, um, chugging along and knowing that like the opportunities are out there and they're going to keep coming, right? Just keep applying yourself. Now we're going to get into the fun stuff. So business funding types, there are tons of ways to fund your business. Um, don't just get you know, hung up on one thing. Um, so self-funding uh, is really, there's self-funding, there's debt financing, there's angel investors, there's venture capitalists, there's business incubators, there's government grants and subsidies, there's bank loans, and there's crowdfunding. We're going to touch on all of these. Um, some of them we're going into a little bit more detail. Some of them will just kind of give a high-level overview. Self-funded. So this is also known as bootstrapping. Basically, that's how I started my business. I unfortunately at the time was not well versed in grants and business credit and all of those things. I just knew I had a really great idea and I knew that I wanted to like put some money behind it, but I didn't have a lot of money. So I'm like, what does self-funding look like? So basically it's like you're using your own financial resources to support your business. Um, so how that what that looked like to me um, was, you know, because I have my nine to five and I was generating, you know, income from that, I would take a certain amount of money every paycheck and just put it into my business. So that way, as I wanted to get tools or create my website and all of those things that cost money, I would have money set aside 
to kind of do that, right? Um, like I wanted to get a business coach. And I always tell people, it costs money to make money. So don't be afraid to invest in your own business. Um, also, uh, people use fa fran uh, family and friends to generate capital as well, right? So it's like, hey, just like you see people standing up GoFundMe pages, or you see people, you know, um, I think about when I'm driving and I see young boys or young girls saying, hey, can you donate to the cheerleading squad or can you donate to the football team because we need new, um, we need new uniforms. You can pitch those things to your to your family and your friends. Hey, I have this really great idea. Can you, you know, donate $20, right? That's you kind of um, facilitating self-funding for your specific business, right? Um, because you're not asking for a large amount of money and you're asking people to kind of, you know, use their, their uh, finances in conjunction with your finances to support that. I really love um, these stats because I was so blown away at the fact that, um, like sometimes when you look at businesses, it's so easy to think that like, oh my gosh, they started off making a million dollars, not knowing that they started from scratch just like us. So it says that 50, 56% of startups use self-funding as their only source, which means that they don't even, they're not touching grants, none of that stuff. They're solely using their money or close friends and family money to fund their business. And it says 82% of startups use self-funding to start their business. So again, just to get started, till you get to that point where you are generating enough money or you have something on paper that you can show other people to entice them to invest into your business. Debt um, financing. So debt financing is kind of similar to what I was talking about in terms of business credit. It's just usually you getting some sort of um, credit, which will be debt for your business from an institution, right? So um, you basically will get a loan, a lot of credit, credit cards, and that is kind of like debt financing. So it's like, oh, you know, you're borrowing money um, from a bank, from a financial institution, um, or from other commercial finance, finan uh, financial companies to fund your business. That's basically what that looks like. So again, that's using kind of business credit, um, if that makes sense. Business credit. We talked about this a little bit. So business credit. Uh, for is determined using the following factors. So again, similar to your personal payment history, age of credit, debt, debt utilization, industry risk, and company size. They want to know how is your business doing with this business credit? Um, what are you doing? How are you using the money? Like, are you paying it back on time? Are you a risk to, you know, in, in terms of lending money? Um, you know, all of these things similar to your personal credit. So if you are thinking, how do I get business credit? So one, your business has to be established. You have to register your business, again, via like an EIN number. You have to open a business bank account. You have to continue to build relationships with vendors. So for example, if I'm a clothing company and I know, um, you know, I want to purchase some bulk merchandise from a vendor, but I don't want to use my own money. I want to use business credit. I need to establish that relationship with the with that vendor so that they know, like, one, I'm serious. Two, my business is legit. Three, that, you know, I am, I'm not just trying to um, get something from free from them. I'm going to utilize my resources in a le legitimized way to get that, um, you know, that merchandise for, for, from them. Um, again, you, if you have a business credit card or, you know, even now they, they have the non-secure cards for businesses too, which you put your own money on it and then you use it and then you pay it back. Similar to if you were, you know, just starting your credit, the same thing with business. So this is a good way. Like if you have a business credit card and then maybe it only has $500 on it and, you know, maybe you order some business cards or something like that. Like you want to show that you're using the business credit because what's going to happen is if you have business credit and you don't use it, but you're asking for more money, they're going to say, well, well, you're not even using what you have. How do I know you're going to pay that on time? How do I know you're not going to go over your limit or what or whatever that 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 may be? So it tells a story. Pay early, pay often, and then focus on credit utilization. Again, everybody says cash is king. 
Um, but I do think that credit is king, right? Because you have so, like, if you are limited on cash, the amount that you can get from a credit perspective is endless. If your business, again, is generating money, it has their financial statements, it, it's showing good on paper. I've seen people get $100,000. I've seen people get a million dollars just from credit alone, um, whether it's through a loan um, or multiple credit cards or lines of, of credit for their, for their business. So again, this is definitely something to utilize when you think about um, debt financing because you need, you need to establish that Dun & Brass. You need to establish all of those things before anybody lends you money um, for that particular funding source. All right, crowdfunding. So there's different types of crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, there's equity crowdfunding, which again, I think about Shark Tank for this because you've seen, if you've seen the show or heard of it, people go up there, they pitch the idea and they say, you know, we've made X amount of money, we're projected to make X amount of money and we're asking for 500,000 for a 10% stake. That's called equity crowdfunding, right? So that's basically you are now, you're giving piece of equity of your specific business in exchange for funds, right? Um, there's donation crowdfunding. So again, think about um, GoFundMe. How many people you've seen who have either have gotten ill, passed away, and that's new because people used to create um, GoFundMes for, for businesses, and they still do, but they have other more robust websites, because if people see GoFundMe, they're like, oh, people are begging, you know, but they have other crowdfunding um, websites that you could create that specifically um, for businesses to ask for small donations. So you could say, I'm just looking for 100 people to give me $50 each. And here's my business idea. Here's how, you know, what we're about, what, how we're planning to use the money. And I think Again, it's another way of funding your business that is not coming specifically out of your pocket, which is different from, from self-funding or borrowing money from, from a bank. Um, and then there's a reward uh, crowdfunding, which is basically your, um, I, I, li I like that, uh, oops, that um, phrase, enticing, because you, you're basically, again, similar to Shark Tank, you're telling you're selling your business. Why should you invest in this business? Why, you know, you think it's a great idea? Why are you passionate about it? What you're going to do with their contributions? Like, oh, I would, I really think, you know, I have a great idea. I would, I'm looking to raise, you know, I don't know, $5,000. And I really think that your contribution of $100 will help me X, right? So that's kind of like the pitch for that. Um, for as it relates to reward uh, crowdfunding. Other funding options. So as you've seen on the list, angel investors are basically people who have lots of money. Um, and sometimes uh, they also call these like silent partners. So if you hear somebody is like, oh, I have a partner and um, it's a silent partner because they invested the money, but they they have nothing to do with the business. So somebody else is completely running the business and they're the face of the business, but they have somebody who has, you know, put money in, into it because they have a lot of money, right? Um, and they believe in the idea. There's, uh, you know, angel investors are usually wealthy. They're using their own net worth, um, you know, in exchange for, again, equity, um, which is similar to uh, a uh, crowdfunding, the equity crowdfunding. Um, venture capitalists, I'm quite sure you've heard of this. So basically private equity investor that provides capital to companies with high growth potential. So this is what I mean about where your fin business financials come in, into play. Because how do you show somebody that you high growth potential? The only way you do that is through numbers, right? Because me, you talking to me telling you like, oh, I have the potential to make 500,000 in the next five months. Well, how do I know that? What is your, what does your financials look like? What does your projections look like? How are you, how is that, you know, where are you, where are you getting that money from? Is it through sales? Is it through like, you have other streams 
of your business that is generating money. Like, again, someone who is going to be providing capital is going to need that information. Um, and then there's business um, incubators, which is really, I think about um, J&J, we have um, something in New York City, uh, which is called J Labs. And it's basically, um, to me, similar to a business incubator, because it's a bunch of businesses in there that are creating products or services that they want to pitch to J&J in hopes that, you know, J&J will buy that uh, product or service from them um, or give them some sort of money uh, to to help them establish that idea. So J&J provides the space. They also have to pay some money for occupying that space because there's labs there, there's, you know, offices, they, you know, the people that are a part of their business get to come work together so that they can collaborate. So, um, and then there's J&J people that they have access to, to kind of help them um, through some of their cases so that they can kind of build that, um, up that, um, you know, that story for their business to help continue to get some capital and some investing, some investment. Business equity. We've been talking a lot about business equity because, um, again, I think a lot more investors are opted into um, wanting something in return for the money that they're giving um, outside of if you're borrowing money from a bank, right? But if you're buying, borrowing money from a venture capitalist or you're looking for them to give you capital from an angel investor, if you're doing crowd, equity crowdfunding, they're going to say, well, what am I getting out of the deal, right? So you need to know, well, what is what does business equity even mean? Because sometimes, again, um, I've seen, if you look at Shark Tank, when it's really the negotiation, you know, the people who are, uh, you know, uh, raising their hand to give money, if my business pitch started out where I said, I'm, I want 500,000 and I'm giving you 10%, you see them sometimes more than likely always counter and say, I'll give you 250 for 20%. Well, what am I giving away with this 20%, right? So what does that equity kind of look like? Um, so equity is the value of your business after deducting your liabilities from your assets. So remember, your liabilities are basically your expenses and what you owe, and your assets is what you own and kind of like that, that profit that you have. And basically, that total number is what um, you know, your shareholders would see after the debt is paid off if your assets were liquidated. Um, and this kind of tells, like you ever heard of the word net worth, which is really like, okay, it's not about how much money you have. It's about what the business is worth. Um, that will basically, you know, again, more of a, from a value perspective, right? So um, business equity, you see there's equity investment, which is, uh, you know, you provide that capital for a percentage of your profits and losses. Um, and, you know, you show the returns, how it's paid out, and then versus like a debt um, investment, which is really like a loan. So if I'm, and I, and I think you can do this as well, like, so say, for instance, you say, I don't want to give any equity out in my business, but I will buy, since you have like access to all of this money um, as a venture to, as a venture capitalist, as a, um, you know, as an angel investor, I will borrow 100000 from you and I'll pay you back a fixed interest rate. Now, the bank could have gave it to you at, you know, say 5%, but maybe you didn't have, you know, you're not established and they won't loan you any money, you get in denied. And now this person is asking for 15%, right? So that's the difference between uh, debt investment and equity investment, where you're giving a percentage of your business or, you even, or you're either taking a loan from that investor and, and um, in return for a fixed um, you know, uh, percentage or income interest. And it just shows you the difference between the two, but I think it's something that you should get familiar with when it comes to you know, business equity, because as you're having conversations with investors, you want to make sure that you understand, again, how equity works, right? Um, I think I use the home ownership uh, analogy a lot, right? So you own a house at 500000 but you owe um, 300000 You have $200,000 
and equity, right? Because it's what you owe um, minus uh, like what you what you already paid technically, um, or the balance of 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 that, right? So an equity again allows you to kind of have leverage um, from a business owner perspective, and then also from an invest investor perspective, right? So how to build business equity? So one, you see the very first thing it says, maintaining a strong balance sheet. How do I know what your profit, profits and losses are if I can't see it on a balance sheet, if you can't produce anything for me? Why should I, why should I lend you money? Why should I invest in your company? Um, your cash flow and projected sales. If you can't tell me how much money you make in next month, you're projected to make next month or next quarter, or even for the rest of the year, is that a good investment for me, right? So those are things to kind of think about. If you're not managing your accounts receivables, which is really like you're knowing your business expenses, you're paying them on time. Um, again, if you don't really have, again, business credit is, I keep going back to that because it is something that I know um, for me have been in business for five years. People keep asking me that question. You haven't gotten business credit yet? Like, it's like a red flag for them. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to owe anybody. But it's like, they're like, this is a this is a way to help, you know, again, further legitimize your business and kind of show that you are utilizing different, you know, um, avenues to further that business along, um, develop, develop, developing operating capital, which basically means that, okay, you're not just having sales come in and then paying your expenses and then having a small amount left you are making money over time and now you have you know a cushion sitting in you know um a funding account where um you can access should you need to do something big like oh, i need to do a bulk order for merchandise i need to you know bring on an accountant um and pay them right i can pay them from that operating capital, right? Um, and not have to worry about, well, if I don't make the sales then I can't pay these people because that operating ca capital is sitting there. Also, which um, I love this is that businesses are now investing, right? So there's so many things that you can do. Like there's a um, 401ks, IRAs that you can set up as a business. There's like stocks, bonds, um, all of these things that you can buy as a business with your business income, right? So people are getting smart with, well, I could use this money to make more money or invest it into something else, right? Um, to continue that, you know, passive income um, and generating the business more money. Because if you're, for instance, buying stock with your business income and it's generating dividends, that's dividends that's being paid out to you that can go back into your business, right? Um, and then creating a definable profit strategy because this is where I kind of, I had this like great idea and I was like, oh, I know what services I'm gonna provide. I know how much I'm gonna charge for them. But w because we're in inflation and a recession and people don't have money like that to spend on specific things, I didn't really have a good profit strategy to show, well, if you know, for some reason, this service w was no longer attractive, how else will my business generate money? What else do I have, you know, in my hat that I can pull out to keep my business afloat? Um, and that was, that's something that, you know, again, learning over time, because we don't know everything um, in the beginning, and we're, you know, kind of just figuring out along the way as we go. To somebody, the pause here, does somebody write something in the chat? Or does someone have a question? Nothing in the chat right now, but um, awesome. Good to know. All right, let's keep going. So, micro lending is another um, form of funding that you can get. Um, this one is similar to uh, again just borrowing money, um, but it's more in a non-traditional way. So it's like, you know, you use micro loans if you don't have access to banks because it's so hard to get a loan from the bank 
um, as a like a small business, in my opinion. Um, so if you have like poor credit or you don't really have any credit established for your business, this is like micro lending, right? So I know um, like uh, credit unions are really flexible. They have like, again, smaller institutions. You guys should really look into like black owned banks because they are helping out, um, you know, black small businesses. And I think again, micro loaning, um, micro lending is, is getting to the point where people are wanting to tap into that because it's like, you know, on um, tapped information. And then you can also do peer to peer loans. So for example, you know, my business is not generating $100,000, but I have some operating capital. So say, for instance, someone said, you know, I just need $10,000 for three months. Um, and I can take it from my business to get, you know, to loan it to you. That's like peer to peer loan. Like we both are business owners, you know, um, and that's kind of like how that would work. Um, but, you know, you use it to kind of get your working capital going, any inventory, things that you would need to, again, further your business along, right? All of the funding is supposed to further your business along. Sometimes people get funding and they're like, oh, free money. I get to use this money for something that's non-business related. And you don't want to make that mistake um, because, again, you have to pay that money back if you're um, taking a loan out. You also, if you're doing crowdfunding or any type of exchange for equity, your business has to be profitable because now you have somebody else owning a stake in your business, right? Um, and I'm quite sure if your business is not profitable, they're going to want their money back. So it's things to just consider so that you can be smart with the money once you get it or have access to it. Business grants. So uh, there are so many. When I say hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grants available for businesses. They have them for woman-owned businesses, for, you know, African-American businesses. They have them for nonprofits. They have them for small businesses in specific industries. Like, sky is the limit with grants. And I think um, a lot more people are sharing this information more publicly and broadly because people just didn't know about it before, right? Um, so if you ever heard of like the SBA, um, they have like a really, really great website on how to get, um, you know, what grants are available from, from, for, from them from a government perspective. There's also like nerdwallet.com, which also shows a really good list of business grants that are available. Um, there's tons of grants. Now, essentially, people like to think of grants as free money, um, right? So that's just like, again, homeowner analogy. If I'm buying a home and I go with this specific bank because they have, you know, they're going to give me $10,000 towards my down payment, that's grant money, right? That's free money that they're giving me so that I don't have to come out of pocket so that I can get this home. So basically, um, grants provide you with free money for startups and existing businesses, um, a business grant is a sum of money that they give. So you would see like, okay, there's this grant available and, you know, it ranges from 1000 to 5000 or this grant available and it's available for 10000 And grants are extremely hard to, to get, in my opinion, because there's so many people applying for them because now everybody is talking about it, that you have to apply for multiple. Like I always try to apply for five and 10 at the same time because I'm like, what's my, what, you know, what's my chances of getting it? If I could get two, why not, right? Um, but again, the applications are just extensive. Um, so again, depending on the the company or the institution that is giving the grant. Um, but I love some of the tips where it says, you know, look for local grants, research previous winners. What did that person do to set themselves apart from previous app, you know, from other from other applicants? Make sure you review the applications and details. I remember applying for grants and I was just like not really taking my time. I was really one excited, but two, like eager to like, I got it, I gotta get this. And I think that's what hurt me in the beginning because I wasn't really taking my time. Like they give you a deadline to apply for the grant. So 
you don't have to do it all in one day. Like before I would just like fill out the information, submit. And now I give myself two to five days to really understand what is it that they're looking for? What is it that they, you know, I'm combing through things. I'm, you know, through my business documentation, I'm putting things together as to like what I want to submit, how do I want to submit it? All of those things so that I can make sure that I'm really answering the questions. I'm really presenting myself in a way that they're going to understand what my business is and why they should give me this money, how I'm going to use it. Um, Some people, because it is, again, really, really hard to get grants, are hiring grant writers. And you can do it on a one-off basis. Oh, I have this grant. I want you to, you know, prepare it and submit it for me. And it might be a fee associated with that, right? But I think research, you know, the grants that are out there, research the grants that are maybe applicable to your specific business and or market or industry, um, and see if you can uh, definitely uh, apply for them. So what is grant writing? So grant writing is basically the practice of completing the application for a financial grant. Um, again, uh, there are, like I use, I don't know if you guys heard, but Fiverr.com. Um, so that's like, I feel like that's like my golden source from a business perspective. Because again, when you're a business owner and you're starting up, you're the CEO, you're the admin, you're the content creator, you're the whatever. And that is a way to get business services for super cheap. So um, in the past, I've used Fiverr uh, and had them um, paid someone to complete a grant application for me. Um, but essentially, you would just be having someone do the grant writing and the submission of whatever the material is that they're asking for um, to increase your chances of basically getting the grant, right? People are tapping into this because they're like, oh, you know, I've submitted tons of grant applications and I'm not getting anything. So let me try something different to see if um, if I can if I can win. And then ways to use business funding, because I keep, you know, reiterating to you guys that once you get the money, what are you going to do with it? So you can invest in marketing, um, you can expand your product or service offering, you can invest in new technology, you can hire employees, you can use to train your existing employees, um, you can in invest, right? Um, and I really think that it's a plan, it's something that you should think about and have a plan before you even start to either look into getting a loan, a credit card, crowdfunding, grants, any of those things, especially with grants, you have to tell them how you're going to use the money. And um, depending on, because I remember when I got my first SBA loan, they wanted proof. They were asking me like, okay, well, give us, you know, I, I remember I had said I was going to use the money. This was like a couple years ago. I was said I was going to use the money for um, like office space um, and some other things. And it was like, okay, well, let us see. Did you, did you, you know, use um, an office space and thankfully, you know, have my documentation. But again, you want to make sure that you have an idea of how you're going to use the business funding because you want to make sure that when you get the money, you're not just going to do something different um, to not help your business. And I think that's it. So again, if you guys, you know, want to reach me, have questions, want to see what my business is about, left some information here for you. Um, but I think we have time for some questions or just comments um, or, or thoughts. So I'll stop here. Anything from anyone on the line? The floor is open. Yeah, how you doing? This is Tim Brown. Hi, Shatisha. No, he didn't. Hi, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had, to, Hi, you know I had to jump on this line and support you. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. First of all, it's, it's awesome um, to uh, to see you as a business owner and your spirit of helping other business owners. I just wanted to say thank you for making time to share your wisdom um, with us and enabling other people to learn from your experiences. And so I just want to say really appreciate, you know, um, uh, what you shared and just what you're doing. And, and I know here within um, our space, our world, mm -hmm. um, 
here, uh, you've also been sharing knowledge within this uh, space as well. So I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Really appreciate you. Of course, no problem. Thank you. You know, BDPA got a special place in my heart. We go back to New York days. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, we and, do. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, and I'm super excited for those that's going to be um, pitching in August. Hopefully, I get a chance to make it to the conference. You never know. I might sign up as a judge. <laughs> Attention, guys. That'd be great. That was That'd that was good. the whole goal here, Satisha. That was <laughs> the goal. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You did not say that, Vince. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, you <laughs> said it first. Yeah. I'm just co. I'm just co-signing. That was yeah. that was the goal. You know. Yep. You bring that uh that skill set that you have and that uh that Shark Tank perspective uh to the program. You know. Yeah. But, uh, amazing job, as, as I anticipated. You. Awesome. Thank you. I'm super excited um, for everyone on the line, you know, to continue their journey and just really use the resources and information available to them to, you know, ensure their success. So excited to, you know, to offer my time. And again, I'm no expert. I'm learning as I'm going. But if I can help pave the way for someone else, I want to do that. So Absolutely. thank you so much, Devin, Vincent, thank for the opportunity. You. Thank you. I, and I see uh, Ziri dropped a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, Ziri, okay. are you in a position to come off mute and speak, or would you like me to I ask can, your questions for you? I was you? to say, I can read them too. Let me know. Uh, Mike, sounds nice. Check one. Uh, hi, everybody. Can you hear me? <laughs> hi. Yes. <laughs> it was somewhere in the room and I couldn't find it, but I'm glad you could hear me. Okay. Um, thank you for all of the valuable information. It seemed like you touched based on a ton of stuff that's broad based and um, I'm, I'm in the process of, I've already applied for grants in the past and I haven't gone through. Right. And it's been mm -hmm. annoying and frustrating. So I've gone to Fiverr, I've gone to chat GPT, like I've done or what, whatever is available. Cause I feel mm -hmm. like people are already leveraging AI, but I wanted to know what other resources you would use to uh, source your grants aside from hello, Alice and grants.gov. If there's any other yeah so i was i had mentioned if you go to sba.gov they have a really robust list um if you go to nerdwallet.com they have a really ro robust list so you gotta just like to me the websites that you named everybody is using those right so you gotta kind of go um and explore uh the other the other options and then i don't know if you if your business is on social media but I follow a lot of um, folks that are constantly posting grants that are available. So it's, a uh, oh, these are the grants that are available for this month, right? And that's how you get access to things that might not necessarily be on, um, you know, on a website. So I would just say, again, look at, you know, SBA.gov, look at NerdWallet. Uh, there's so many different companies that are, giving you information about grants um is are you where are you based so currently i'm in philadelphia okay but um my business is supposed to be based, based in maryland dc region nope no reason so uh no i mean no um no worries my question is so each depending on the state should have a business um resource center um so i'm from like new york new jersey and they also have uh, a list of grants, right? So tap into your business resource center, see if there's one in Maryland. Um, they usually have them for, you know, again, from idea to operating, um, where you can get uh, coaching, get access to classes, and all of that stuff is free. But again, people don't know that it actually exists. So do some research, research on that as well. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. And Zuri, um, just just want to chime in. I, I think that it's it's always great to have an expert who does grant writing. Um, that is probably one of the best things to to have as far as you know some some lifelines. But yep. one of the things you know we are all in the tech space, and I'm not sure how uh, frequently or often you use ChatGPT. But for frameworking, outlining, and reviewing uh, your applications and submissions, especially when you're doing a large volume, that actually gives you the ability to go through a lot more applications a lot faster. And I personally, I pay I'm the paid version. Um, lots of different ways and techniques that you can train it exactly on your business. Uh, so mm -hmm. if, if you have any questions about that, you know, you can reach out. But 
definitely leverage that tool as much as possible uh, so that before you go and talk to a grant writer, you actually have something that you can have them review. And that. that way, you know, we're lowering, whether it be if you're paying them on an hourly basis or just to review, they can mm -hmm. give you pointers, but you've already got something substantial that you're working with. Um, GPT is a, a super powerful tool. And if you're not using it, definitely start using it yeah um, jordan you just dropped some gems so i i gotta put that in my tool belt because that's definitely something that um is helpful and and should be you know utilized for sure jordan, i guess the cool. only the only caveat i would throw out there is just you want to be careful with what you share right that because is true. um we i i love it jordan to your point of jordan we met last year I love ChatGPT to give me like a baseline outline for mm -hmm. all type of documents and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you also want to be careful what you put in there because being it's open source, then that that information is now available to anyone else that's using the tool as it's yeah. actually learning yeah. and, and growing. And so uh, Zuri, if, and like I said, if you wanted to offline, I can uh, kind of show you some of the things that if um you know if, if you're talking about training it on you know your business or your business model there are ways to be able to do it offline uh if you know when i can walk you through through that element of it or if you're using the plugins uh about being able to redact a lot of the personal information and ip so that mm -hmm. you know you're not just sending it off into the ethers uh without any kind of control or uh guardrails around it yeah thank you jordan i'm in your dms <laughs> I love it. All right, everyone, that does bring us to time. Um, and Shatish, I don't know if you have a hard stop if, if there's any other additional questions, so I can leave the call open if needed. Um, but I will stop the recording and let you all go. Um, so we are respectful of your time. But thank you, Shatisha, for sharing with thank us. Thank you. Um, and I will share the recording link out with everyone so people can come back and reference this. Um, and as a reminder to the participants on the line, um, I do need you to send me an email confirmation by tomorrow uh, confirming your participation in, and attendance at the conference and participation in the pitch competition uh, so we can plan logistics accordingly. And uh, Tim is working on some partnerships with some of our sponsors um, to get you some additional opportunities for potential contracts in their supplier diversity program. So we want to make sure we um, know who's attending. I don't know who plans to be there. So just drop me an email if you haven't already, uh, confirming um, if you plan to attend or not so we can plan accordingly. All right. Uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you. thank you all for listening. If you're watching on YouTube for the first time, uh, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. We'll be back soon. And also uh, tune in to our BDK Taking Career Talk tomorrow. Uh, we have Yvette, Dr. Yvette Pegues of your Invisible Disability Group talking about diversity equity inclusion accessibility and belonging i gotta get that it's a new acronym now <laughs> um in an inaccessible world so uh, check that out uh tap uh -huh. in with us but we will see you all next time and i'll be in touch soon thank you thank you bye